In this episode of the JSP Show, I'm going to show you how to shine a spotlight on the subject. Hey guys, what's up? It's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of the JSP Show. And today I'm going to show you how to create a spotlight effect in Lightroom and Photoshop where you can get your viewer's eye focused on the main subject of the image. Uh, this is a little dandelion I shot, uh, I think it was late last year. Um, you can see there's a bit of golden light on it. It was late afternoon sun and yeah, just a, just a epic time of day to shoot this magical little uh, dandelion. All right, dudes, let's get started. What we first thing we want to do is head over to the radial filter. I'm going to drag that filter out over top. Don't worry about that color cast there. Obviously, that's been set from a, a previous ra radial filter I created. So here's a tip, guys. When you want to reset all the sliders for a filter or any of the um, adjustments uh, panels, just double click the effect word and that resets everything. You can see if I mess all those things back up again and if I double click effect, boom, just resets it. Okay, for this, for this, what we want to do guys, we want to invert the mask. Now I'll show you at the moment, I've just exaggerated that. You can see when I lower the exposure, it's affecting outside the filter. So we want to invert that. We want to affect inside the filter. So let me reset that. The other thing you want to do is you want to feather it out this slider here, feather out the, the adjustment. So the feather is the gradient between the center point and the outside point. So if I turn that feather down and then watch what else what happens. So you can, it gives you a really hard edge on the edge of the filter. If I turn that feather right up, it's gonna give you a nice soft edge on the edge of that filter. So I recommend you feather it out to 80 or 90, it's fine. All right, let me reset that. And what we wanna do guys, we actually wanna up the exposure. I usually start around 0.5, but 0.5 is actually a little bit too much for this. So anywhere between, you know, 0.2, 3, 4, 5, around that, depending on what you're trying to light, there's already a nice bit of light on this. Um, there's already a nice bit of light on the dandelion. I just wanna to add to that. So I add about 0.3. So you can see what I've done here. If I move this filter around, oh, can you tell? Actually, it's in the minuses. <laughs> Might help if I make it 0.3 in the pluses. Okay, now you'll tell. As I move this around, there's just ever so slightly, like a little bit of feathered light that I'm playing with. So I'm going to put that over the main subject there, which is the dandelion. Now, if I turn that on and off, you'll see there's a let's see that subtle, subtle bit of light that just draws your eye exactly where the dandelion is. Now, there's so many uses for this little tip. Um, if you've got a bed of flowers in the foreground and, and you want to accent all the flowers, you just make a whole heap of small little radial filters, or you want to add some speckled light to, to a rock, or there's just so many uses for this just to add interesting light onto the subjects in your, in your image. So you can see what it's done. It's just drawn your eye right into that dandelion. All right, I'm going to close that now and do a little bit before and after. Boom, boom. Look at that. Just a, just a slight touch, and, and you'll notice most things that I do, guys, there's just little adjustments, and they build all together to give you a final image. All right, I've got something similar in Photoshop. Um, let me jump over to Photoshop and show you how it's done over there. All right, we've got the same image, but we're in Photoshop. Something you need to know about Photoshop, some of the filters don't work until you convert to 8-bit. So I'll show you how to do that. If we go Image here, and we go Mode, we want to go to 8-bit. 8 bits per channel. So we convert that there and the filter I'm going to use will work. All right. So let me just delete that layer there. Now, every time I jump over into Photoshop, the first thing I do is Command or Command Control, Command, <laughs> Control J, and that's going to duplicate the layer. And you can see uh, Photoshop's made an exact copy of the main image there. Uh, Photoshop is a destructive editor, so Get in the habit of duplicating your main layer and you can always get back to where you started. So that's a good tip there. All right, so what we want to do, guys, we want to go, we, first thing we want to do is we want to convert this to a smart filter. And I'll be honest, guys, I forget where things are in the menu. So here's another tip. Um, if you forget where things are in the menus too, just hover over the help. And if I type in smart, and there you go, convert to smart object, there it is. So if I go layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. So the duplicated layer, we want to convert that to a smart object. So that's in layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. And the next thing we want to do, we want to add the little spotlight. So if I go up here to filter, I go down to render and go to lighting effects. And we get this massive panel. Don't worry, don't get overwhelmed. It's <laughs> it's pretty pretty simple what we're going to do. And you can see already what we started to see, like the radial filter type 
um, set up here. Now, if you see, if yours looks like this, that's okay. Just drag one of the handles out until you make the circles roughly the same size, and then you can just move it around and put it wherever you need to put it over the main subject. So, so don't fret if you see something like this, um, and I didn't do it that time. But don't if you see something all warped like this. Don't fret, just drag it till it looks like a circle and then you can easily move it out and make it make it the size you need to to highlight your main subject. All right, and we want to make sure we're on spotlight. Sorry, I should have said that first, guys. Over here in the, in the right panel, make sure we're on spotlight because that's the effect we want to use. Okay, so hotspot is the size of that middle, the size of the middle, so, so basically the size of the brightest part of the spotlight is this area here. So I like to bring that down to something, something like that will be fine. And obviously this varies from subject to subject, so have a play around with that. Now the other thing is the intensity, guys. Obviously we don't want to blow it out like this, crazy. We just want to accent it and just remember, even if you do go a little bit too hard here, because we created a smart object, we can always come back and adjust it. And I've also got another little tip too to save you coming back. You can always just lower the opacity too on this layer. All right, so I'm going to make it a little bit over the top there. Now, one thing I will recommend you play with is the ambient. Okay, so the ambient, see, so you can sort of see what's happening. It's adjusting everything basically outside of the filter a lot. So I would turn that ambient up a bit. We don't want to darken everything down totally. But when you do turn that up, just, just realize that you may have to lower that intensity down a little bit too because we don't want to blow it out. We just want to accent it. We're just adding a tiny touch, a little bit of light there. All right, when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go, okay. You can see it's just add a tiny little accent onto that uh, dandelion there. Let me just enlarge that a little bit so you can see what's happened there. So it's just, it's just added a bit of light. And if you, you may think to yourself, oh, it's just a little bit too bright. That's fine. Just play. So actually, that's 100%. This is what it's done. And it is a little over the top, guys. You can see I burnt that thing out there, burnt the dandelion out. But that's okay. We can either go back in and adjust that intensity, or I could just grab, grab the opacity slider and move that down to somewhere where I think, you know, it was just enough, just accenting that that main subject there. And I think that's got it. And the nice thing about this spotlight too, it's actually darkened the outside a little bit too, so it's done a bit of vignetting while we've been at it. So, guys, that's the two ways you can add a little spotlight effect and highlight your different subjects in Lightroom and Photoshop. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this week's show and you've learned something. Please leave some comments if there's something particular you're not sure about or something you want me to cover in future shows. I always appreciate your feedback. And I'll just remind you, if you haven't grabbed the free Lightroom Traveler course valued at $19.95, check out that URL below that's on the screen now and uh, pick that up because uh, it's... Because yeah, it's not going to be free forever, and I'm really proud of it. It's been it's been uh, really really popular. So that's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, get out there and share the photo love. This is Johnny out. Peace.